The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We have a special guest today at 917 in 10 minutes. Uh, Mr. Shane Smolian, the Wolf Trader, will be on. Give me a little extra time today because he has such great information uh, that he's do doing. Plus, he's got a new Twitter service that he would like to chat about. Uh, so you can see the DAX has been in a little bit of a downtrend since the three drive to a top pattern. But let's switch over and look at the one that is really interesting. This is our negative interest rate 30-year uh, bond for Germany. And as you can see here, we've had this nice little ABCD pattern complete. Tiny bit of a reversal, but uh, it is due to go lower based on what we're seeing in the regular bonds also. Now, as a special treat, I want to uh, talk about two things. First of all, when these patterns fail, folks, you, you, you flat got to get out of the way. If you remember last week, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. We were talking about this in the den. Mr. Z was talking about it, buying the, the cotton around 63. And as you can see, it made a beautiful bottom down there at 63. It rallied for two days. It got up to 64 and change. And then look what happened. When it goes below those key levels, uh, folks, you just can't stay in front of it because uh, we've seen these markets accelerate both to the upside and to the downside. So pay very, very close attention to that because when they fail, they can fail very, very badly. And to that point, I want to bring one pattern to your attention that is uh, in, in process right now. Whether it works or not, I don't know, but it's got all the things that we like to see. And I'll bring it up for you. Here it is. It is the old slippery black stuff, crude oil. And we're down here near that uh, 55, the exact 61% retracement on the daily chart, folks, I believe is at 5480. So watch that price. But there's a three drive pattern there. It uh, lines up perfectly. You could see the pattern from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And uh, it's a 15 minute chart, but you can see it on an hourly chart. Same thing. But uh, that's what we're watching here in crude oil today, right at that 61% retracement. Retracement. And remember, we were extremely bearish this week in crude oil because of the fact that the high that we made last Friday was a spot on 61% retracement. And then it went lower. Okay. Now, let's talk just a tiny bit about a market that is rocking and rolling. That, that is the silver. Here's the chart from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange on open interest. All I did was I pulled it up. You see where it says volume and uh, the open interest is there. You see the red arrow. You see that September silver with 400, 149,000 open interest uh, four times the um, one, two, three, three times the amount that we have. Oh my gosh, it's a lot more than three. That's only five thousand. Wow, that's a big amount. Shut the front. That's twenty times. Anyway, notice that the drop in open interest, folks, when the market went up in a new high ground with with pretty good volume. You can see the volume there uh, was one of the higher volumes that we've had, you know, since the ones we had way back in January. So this is a this is a key thing. This could be the first sign that silver could be reaching, you know, some type of a of a high. Mr. Z posted a couple things. Uh, he sent them to me last night uh, that I'll post into the newsletter this week that shows the big ABCD patterns and weekly charts of the gold and silver because there's some ABCDs up here at this level. But the big breakout uh, has occurred, and now what we have to wait and see is whether this open interest has got to start. We've seen this before, but, you know, maybe it's not going to happen again. I don't know, but it's worth paying attention to. And the reason for that is open interest is the amount of money that they're bringing in. They've got to have new buyers. There has to be people that are there that are willing to, uh, you know, enter the market. That's the, that's the real key as, we're, as we look at some of these things. Uh, we were interrupted yesterday. In fact, I had, I've lost electricity here twice this morning. Um, because of, we got electrical storm due to the monsoon season, so this is always interesting this time of the year. But we will have Kevin Murphy on sometime next week, probably, or soon after that, 
because we've had a lot of comments about that triangle pattern uh, that he talked about. That's that A, B, C, D, uh, what we call the, you can see the three drive to a top. It's a reverse point wave expanding triangle, also known as the T6 pattern in the, um, the stock market. So we'll keep a close eye on that one as we look at it also. The euros had a pretty good rally here. Uh, the question, $64 question is, whether this is a major bottom in the euro, all we do know that it's some type of a bottom. We didn't rally very much, folks. We rallied about, a, I believe, 85, well, about 90 pips off the bottom. Uh, we rallied a little over 100 pips in the in the uh, uh, British pound, and both of those were extremely oversold. So that still the jury's still out, and we won't know that answer probably for another week or so. But we're coming in next week, which will be uh, uh, quite exciting, I think. Well, every week is exciting, but uh, that, that should give us some more information of whether this uh, dollar index is going to head back to 98 or head back to 95. That means a euro either at 111 or 114 as we, as we look at that uh, today. Okay, now the next one I wanted to cover here because we've only got about four more minutes before the first break is the, um, the, the gold market. I just want to show you the breakout that we had here. We were, we've been, you know, this is, it's really frustrating, folks, when you're really bullish something and you're not in, and that, that's my fault for not just flat buying it and watch it go up. I, uh, I am not very good at buying breakouts too often, well, period. So I'm not going to start now. It's too late to, to tell me to, uh, to try to do it a little differently. But uh, we did get up. If you'll notice that 1.27 expansion up there at the top, that was at 157. 1457. The high yesterday in this uh, gold was 1455.40, I believe. That was uh, very, very close to that number, and uh, we'll we'll see if this is going to be a uh, uh, continuation. We'll have some. Well, we've already corrected twenty dollars already this morning, so we know we know we're in some type of a correction already. So. The, Watch, watch thirty-four dollars down, folks. Watch the so that would take you down to twenty-three, fourteen, twenty-three, would no fourteen twenty, fourteen twenty would take you down to the um, well. We're showing fourteen seventeen on the chart here, so that would be down thirty-four dollars. And with markets swinging like this one is, we've we've had a couple of sixty-dollar corrections already in this thing. So it's not unusual to see these big corrections. So we want to watch to see if they form an ABCD format. And then we'll be able to uh, follow it a little bit better. So let's keep a close eye on that. By the way, the sugar gave up the ghost. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, it broke down below that really key level at $12. And uh, we certainly uh, will wait to see what the next slip's going to be. But we, uh, we, we, fact is, we have broken, as of this morning, we have broken through the new lows. We, we, we said once it went below 1180, now we're trading at, I believe, 1165. The buy would have been around 1210, and your stop would have been about $200. And now you're you're completing another bottom down here. You're almost at a double bottom from way back in October at 1140. We could be there in just a few minutes. So, uh, sugar's not ready, folks. You got to be uh, when the uh, patterns fail. You got to get out. Stay tuned, folks. We'll have Shane Smolian on next. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have with our guest today, Shane Smolian from The Wolf Trader. Shane, take the mic and go after him, buddy. We're all ready for you. Good morning, Larry. How are you today? Very good, buddy. Go ahead. You, you're, can, you've you got see, the, can you guys see? Can it's perfect. Okay? Yes, it's just perfect. It's just like okay. uh, just like uh, Fox News or CNBC or whatever, so okay. keep it up. <laughs> all right. Can, can we see the first chart here? Uh, yes, I think you've got it up. Yeah, you have control. So whatever you just okay. whatever you put up there, you uh, this is yep. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Shane Smolian, and this is a presentation with uh, Larry Pesavento here, and we're going to be talking about uh, the Fed a lot today, and we're going to also talk about different types of cycles uh, that I'm developing, and they're going to be uh, dealing with astrology and lunar cycles. So uh, before we get started here, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is how can you reach me? Uh, because we, we often run out of time at the end of the show. So uh, I've created a free Twitter a free, free Twitter feed uh, instead of an email update. So if you guys want to just uh, subscribe to this, this is a free update. It's called Wolf Trader Info. So the green logo is the free one. And if you just want to get updates, I don't update it that often, but I do you know, put, you know, when we're going to be on shows or media appearances or just some general information, I do put it out there. There's not too many tweets you can see. There's only 21 tweets to this, but that's the best way to follow me. Uh, so it's the green logo. That's the free one. If you want to uh, sign up for the service, the paid service, this is the one with 70, 73,000 tweets. Obviously, there's a big difference there. The red one is the paid version. So if you if you see two different versions of Wolf Trader and you're confused, that's what that is. So just wanted to put that out there. And then uh, you can also reach me at Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com. But the, the Twitter is a good way to, to, to sign up because I put links there and I put all different, you know, sometimes I'll put some videos there too. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to go back over again about the Fed and what we talked about before because some people weren't able to see the last presentation. And then we're going to kind of dovetail out into uh, – into some lunar cycles, but essentially in 2018, um, we saw a sell-off in the markets, and the Fed began uh, doing what I call a stress test. They tend to do this, and I think they do this because they want to see how strong the market can be on its own. And so 
um, they began reducing the, the juice in March, and then the market was able to go for a few months on its own. It was able to, to you know, kind of go on its own, but then it started failing, and the Fed began this reflation. And it, and the thing to understand about the Fed is that when they want to reflate the markets, it doesn't take very long. It took it takes about two to four weeks. So um, there's a, just an incredible control that the Fed has over these markets. Now, I've talked earlier in the last presentation about some of these deflationary forces that are going on in many markets, silver, oil, copper, coffee, natural gas, and we've had this persistent bond, bond rally. So these, these are deflationary forces that are in effect, and I know you talk a lot about these negative interest rates on your show, but that looks like that's the direction that we're trying to go. Um, and then we have this inflationary effect, of course, which is the Fed. Uh, and this silent QE continues. And so the Fed use is at all time highs, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. Um, and like I said, they can turn this downtrend up in two to five weeks. So they're at an all time high in terms of their power and influence over the markets. Can you still hear me okay? Perfect, yes, Okay. Just great. So this is the timeline again, I, I spoke about this before. We had the QE1, the 2010 stress test, QE2, operation twist, QE3. Uh, balance sheet accumulation, and then they attempted a stress test in this 2014 to 2015 period, and the markets failed right when they did that. And now we're in this what I call the silent QE period, and they had that 2018 stress test. Now the silent QE means uh, there's more efficient ways that they can drive this market, and also one thing to understand too is that we have this what I put quote unquote reduction. Okay, I have a drawing tool here so we can. I can draw on the screen here to illustrate this, but this is this is just the Fed's balance sheet. We're at $3.8 trillion here. Uh, now notice, this is what I quote, call the quote reduction. So if you look at the net levels here, it's only hooked back to about the 2014 levels. So we still have a very significant balance sheet in terms of net assets, but the key here is net because what happens is <clears throat> during these quantitative easing periods, the Fed was purchasing mainly quality paper, also mortgage-backed securities, but they continue this purchase of mortgage-backed securities. It's just these, these things mature. And so what happens is they keep, they're keep, they keep purchasing these things. And what happens is as they mature, they fall off the balance sheet, but the purchases have actually continued. So really we're like up here. In other words, it's, it's hard, it's hard to understand. So they show people this and they say, look, we're flat, we've been reducing, but in reality, they're continuing these purchases. So the QE continues because when you start something out here and it starts to mature, you know, it starts to mature here and there's a lag time, now you can repurchase it as it falls off the balance sheet and it looks like the balance sheet isn't increasing, but they are still purchasing these. So that's the thing too, that's one of the illusions that's going on that people don't understand that the QE is alive and well. So, I'll go to this next slide here. Okay, so this was the, the graph that I showed uh, in here. This is the timeline. So right here, this is QE1 into here. Uh, this is, you can see how small and microscopic this is relative to where we are now. Uh, and then this was the stress test in 2010 into here. And, th and you know, this, this one was really interesting to me because this is when Bernanke came into here and he was like, well, okay, that was great. We did QE1. Now I'm going to just start outright selling off the balance sheet. And he tried that and the market started collapsing into here. And I remember this very clearly. There was this inverse head and shoulders. Everyone was talking about this was the end of the rally. You know, we were going to go down to all these new lows. And then he was like, no, no, I'm just kidding. No, for, uh, we're going to have a new QE. And then this new QE came out into here. And the markets rallied up into here. And then the 2011 down into here, this summer decline here coincided with a reduction of the juice. Also, this coincided with an improvement in the Astro. So the Astro actually improved into here. So if you were an Astro trader and you were looking at lunar cycles, solar cycles, Bradley, all these things, everything was working beautifully. And and this bottom into here, actually, I, was t I timed this one to the day just using transits because when the Fed isn't involved, you know, things things work great with the Astro. But then the Fed started becoming involved again with the Operation Twist. This was the LTRO in Europe. And that's when we started getting the zombie state. And that LTRO, Europe had their own version, but Europe's version 
was very different than our version because the Fed, the Fed here, believe it or not, I don't understand all of this animosity towards the Fed. A lot of, I mean, you hear all these people say abolish the Fed and gold standard, all of this stuff. But the reality is that the Federal Reserve is very, very transparent with what they do. They will tell you what they're going to purchase ahead of time when they're going to purchase it. I mean, they get it kind of close. I mean, they have these auctions and they tell you what they're going to put out and what they purchase. But compared to the way Europe did it, Europe came in here with this, you know, LTRO. They told you after the fact what they did. So you didn't even know what was going on. And then after the fact, you're like, oh, we, this is what we purchased. So our Federal Reserve is actually very transparent. We got to pay a few bills, Shane. Stay with sure. us, and we'll be right back. Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, we're back, folks. We're talking with Shane Smolian. Go ahead, my friend. All right, Larry, can you hear me? Perfect. Boy, this is amazing. You know, I call you during regular market times and we can never connect but during the mercury retrograde everything's working so that's that's funny it's it's, it's not <laughs> working over here I've, I've lost electricity <laughs> twice this morning so go ahead my friend well, well i've had a rough week i've lost a server this week too i've had some technical issues but our, our show seems to be going okay today so that's that's a Perfect. good thing yes um okay so 2014 2015 this is what i call our first real this is a stress test into here this is a prolonged stress test 
uh, market was able to go up on its own. This was a real growth period into here. This was real. This was real stuff into here. This was not the Fed. Uh, but then it faltered, and it faltered in a big way. Um, and I believe this was in August. This was this August time. So one thing to remember, too, people got to have to understand something. The Fed has fundamentally shifted the cycles of the market. So if you're looking at all of these cycles going back 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 100 years, they're not really valid anymore. Uh, because everything has been shifted, there's all these new cycles that are emerging. So I would urge anybody, if you're doing cycles, to look from 2008 forward on this. Okay, that's just that would just be a recommendation I would make. This is the silent QE period I was talking about, and this coincides with that last diagram that I showed on the balance sheet where they continue the purchases, but they're expiring, so it looks like they're not adding to the balance sheet, but really they are. Really they are. And so the 2018 stress test came in, and this, this is, of course, into here. This is the Trump run into here. This is after Trump was elected, uh, and this was helped by the Fed. So this was a Fed-driven rally into here, and then, of course, we, you know, we were able to and if they pulled back into here and the market went up just for a little bit on its own, just for a few months, it was able to do it, but then failure once again. And then they came in with the reflation, only took a few weeks to do it. Same thing happened into here in this recent decline. It only took them two weeks to turn up the juice. And I'll show you uh, in another diagram here that this these all happen before the market turns. In other words, this is not linked to the market. I'm not, I'm not correlating this to the market at all. This is all just Federal Reserve action into here. And this is, this is of course, is the, the one that I just talked about with the, the actual reflation into here. You can see that they start before the market turns. This is not something that's linked to the market. I haven't taken a moving average and shifted it to the left or anything like that. This is purely just the Fed. I can close my eyes, not look at the market, and tell you what it's going to do because I know what the Fed is doing. And this is the most recent hook. And now we're at these all-time levels. We're at all-time levels of QE, guys. It's alive and well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about these interest rates cuts, which we'll talk about. I believe the next meeting's on the 31st and of July, and that's when Mercury goes direct. So that could be interesting. But it doesn't really matter if they cut rates or not, because they're already doing QE, people. So I don't, it doesn't, I don't, it, it's, it's all, this is all just for show, you know, in terms of the rate cut and not. I mean, it's not going to affect anything. This is what's affecting the markets, not, not whether we cut interest rates or not. So, um, Again, this is just another graphic here, two weeks to bottom, four weeks to bottom before. So you're, you're talking about a very rapid, rapid turnaround in the markets. I mean, the Fed, they have complete control over these markets. They're, and they're at an all-time level of strength. Uh, the level of tools that they have at their disposal now, and they, they're starting these new reverse repos too, which is yet another tool, which is that's kind of like an anti-Fed use. But they, they control the markets with that, too. I mean, there's just so many things going on here. And they've gotten very good at it. They've gotten very good at this. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what they do. That's, this, is, this is really like their hidden mandate. Um, I talked about this before, the real money. What is the F Fed use in terms of real money? Well, if you take it, if you take the, Fed, the market and divide it by the Fed use, you'll get an indicator down here. Well, this is this is why I say it's priced in real dollars. So in, in, in essence, when the market goes up without the Fed, uh, like you saw into here, when the market goes up without the Fed and the Fed is falling, the market is really going up on its own. Okay, it's doing it up on its own. But when the Fed has to come in and boost the markets, the market is not doing it on its own. So in real dollar values, the market is falling. So we're at these really, really low levels. And uh, probably somewhere around the mid 300s is fair valuation on the S&P right now, but people don't have to worry about that because the Fed is not going to go anywhere. They're not going to abandon the market. So this is here to stay. This is a real thing. The Fed is going to support us, and this is the new norm. Whether uh, you agree with it or not, you know, as a trader, we really shouldn't care about these things. I'm really relatively neutral to positive on that uh, because I think, you know. What is the alternative in 2008? I say this to people, and they say abolish the Fed, gold standard, all this stuff, and I'm thinking, well, what do you want? You want a Great Depression? Is that really what you want? So the answer is no. Um, so anyway, uh, lunar cycle here, uh, July 17th. Now, this is the old lunar cycle here. I'll talk about this, not intraday, but you have a, a July 17th low into here. So we just hit a major low into here, and the planetary speed index which is one of the main astro indicators that I follow, 
is hitting a low. I mean, it's hit, it's been falling and the market's been going up. So what does that tell you? That tells you that we are extremely, extremely, extremely bullish right now. Uh, and, and the market's been rising, even in terms of recently, we had a, a recent pullback in the Fed use and the market's still going up or it's resisting. So you have a very, 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 very bullish scenario. Let's just say bullish uh, in terms of this, in terms of the Astro is going down, the even the Fed use has in the last few days has been falling and the market's resisting. So that's telling me that this market wants to go higher. I mean, those are the indications that it's giving. Uh, of course, nothing is certain. I mean, you know, you could come out with a, a war event or something with Iran tomorrow and, you know, things could collapse. But as it is now, the way I see this, we're in a, it's, it's, just, it's just very bullish. It's very stubbornly bullish. And so this gets us to the next concept that I, I talk about. This is really, really important to understand for Astro. Uh, this is, this is a relative market bias. And what that means is that what is the market doing in relation to the Astro? So the one thing people have to understand is that if you have an Astro cycle like this and the market is bullish, what's going to actually happen is that the market is going to uh, react to this. If it if on the up cycles, the market's going to go up, and during the down cycle, the market's just going to go sideways. If you're bullish, and you know, it's going to go up, and it's just and when you go into the down cycle, it's just going to go sideways. So it's going to look like this if you're in a bullish environment. The market's very rarely going to just trace out what the astro does, and so you need to identify what is going on. Is it is it bearish? Is it neutral, or is it positive or bullish? And so right now we're in what I call a positive relative market bias. In other words. Um, market wants to go up so when you get these down cycles all that you get is a sideways move and so that's really important to understand because it, it, then you know the the price action of the tape is the dominant feature so the astro is great to give you accents and whatnot but if you have a fed in there and if you have you know a very bullish environment it doesn't matter if you know something like a bradley or something like that is falling uh the market's just going to shake it off and go higher so this is why I always say the market works best with, with trading with a trend. Um, <clears throat> yes, you can pick bottoms, but the Astro, I always like to identify the bias, and then that, I think that's the better way to go with it. That's just my personal opinion on that. But um, And we've got another break coming. Shane, you're doing uh, absolutely perfect, buddy. The visuals are just incredible. Stay with us, buddy. Thanks, Thanks another, sir. Another 10 minutes. Thanks, pal. Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific iSell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're talking with Shane Smoyan. You want to continue, my friend? Sure, Larry. Okay, I have a lot of information here. I know we, got, we have 10 minutes left, so I'll try to condense this a little bit but relative market bias so uh if you're positive you're looking to buy the lows so if if your market's trending up in relation to those these cycles you want to be buying lows if you're neutral which is sometimes that can happen then you buy the lows and you sell the highs if you're negative you're only selling the highs so you're so like if you're in a negative situation um you would be you know the, the cycle will be looking like this and then and, and the market would be you know going like this it would be kind of trending down you'd be looking to to short these only if you're in a negative bias or whatever but right now we're in a positive bias it's a very positive environment uh and i think i my personal feeling is i think even the fed is surprised by how powerful that they've become uh, uh and with these markets uh and this is just a more detailed chart about how to treat the relative market bias but even the fed use goes through this so you have four what i call four phases of the fed juice cycle uh, the phase number one is a visible bull, and so markets markets going up, Fed juice is going up. Um, phase two would be a hidden bear, and that's when the Fed juice is going up, but the market is lagging. Uh, phase three is a visible bear; they're both going down together. And then phase four is what I call a hidden bull. That's what we're in right now. Fed juice is falling, but the market is resisting. So I'm going to show you this right now on the chart. Now these are two indicators uh, that I look at. This one is the original Fed juice that I optimized last around 2016, right before the election. And it, ho it holds up very nicely. It models the market very nicely. This one here is, uh, is an optimized version, and I've been working on optimizing it, uh, trying to get it to be a little bit better than this one. And I think it's, it's doing so. Uh, you can see that this, this, this non-optimized one tends to fl flutter a little bit where this one was more consistent with its pattern when it when it tends to charge up um, and this one the optimized one turned I think turned more accurately on this last turn but they're they're similar the thing to, to look at here though is usually when we have a falling fed juice into here you see this here the markets kind of following down with it uh, right here we we're in a sell period here and the markets resisting you see this right here it's not doing it, it doesn't want to go down and so that's what, what that's what we, we call a positive relative market bias so you're looking to buy the lows into here. This is the, you know, I, I've tried multiple times to short this, multiple times on this rally, and it's been really tough going. I don't think we've we've succeeded very few times, if any. I think one or tw once or twice, that was it. It's very, very tough to short this market because it wants to go up. And we're, we're coming into a, a an astro period that's actually um, bottoming now. So uh, th this is the Bradley, which... Let's see if I can go forward into here. I thought I had my. Here it is. Sorry, we went back here. This is the planetary speed index. We're actually coming into a bottom into here, and the market's going up. So that's a relative, a positive relative market bias. 
and so this is this is what what I was referring to. So we're we're just really strong right now. I mean, that's the only the bottom line is it's it's virtually impossible to short this market. And as long as the Fed keeps doing this, I, I can't see what's going to stop them. I I don't see anything here. I mean. I used to look to Astro to say, well, you know, there, there's this multiple year high here, the Bradley's topping here, the planetary speed index in here. Okay, it's going to take a major dislocation for this market to go down. Um, and I, again, those are always possible. I'm not saying that, but I haven't seen the Fed fail yet. This is the most reliable indicator that I've ever seen in my life. It, it very rarely lets me down in terms of major surprises on this. Um, so I want to talk. Real quick here about model development. Um, I'm working on developing new models, okay, that are gonna that are combining the past with the future. Because one of the issues with Astro models is they don't have uh, future verification in them. So when you develop a model, uh, a regular Astro model, it's only looking at the past, which I'll, I'll kind of fast forward here. And this is an example. This is silver, and this is using a traditional modeling system. This model only looks at the past. It doesn't correlate into the future to see how are you going to do going forward. And it didn't it didn't do too bad. I mean, if you look here on silver, it had a top here on the 17th, uh, which was a few days early, but it did catch a lot of that rally. But what I'm working on here uh, to, to improve upon these is I'm looking to uh, create a customized lunar cycle that I'm going to be able to validate into the future. So on this chart here, this down here, this represents, these are different buy and sell signals down into here. So these green bars represent a buy and the red bars represent a sell. So this, everything back here would be the past, okay? And everything into here would be the future. So I'm looking to create these models that actually look at both of these. How did it do in the past and then how did that do in the future? And these, these lines down here, these are the degrees of the moon as you go up. So I'm actually creating and writing my own lunar cycles now that are going to use something called a walk-forward technology to, to, to validate the past with the future. So in other words, if you stopped it last weekend, this is what it would have done this week on silver. So this, this is something that I had worked on before and I actually started uh, trying to finalize this last night. Uh, but it actually did a much better job of modeling this silver rally. You can see into here. In other words, the other one cut it here, uh, but this one actually modeled it all the way up, uh, I think, in a better fashion than just looking at the past. So that's something that I'm working on uh, to improve upon the, the, the existing Astro that we have. Because uh, with these changing markets, with the Fed in there, you're going you're gonna to need to have even more edges on this than just a traditional cycles that just cycle the past. Can those be useful? Yes, very useful. But I think that this is going to be what I would consider to be like the future of it. So real quick, um, I know we're running out of time, but Mercury retrograde is Mercury's in retrograde right now in Leo, tra tracing back into the uh, upper degrees of Cancer, coming up to the midpoint. And then there's this Fed meeting right around the 31st of July. So. That's interesting for people who want to watch that because I talked about if this market is going to go down, it's going to need a dislocation. So you do have a, a relatively hard chart that day, and um, Mercury. And when Mercury is going direct or retrograde, those are the days that big dislocations to the downside can happen if they happen. Uh, every single major move that has happened to the downside has happened within plus or minus three days of the retrograde. I don't know why that is, but when those planets are moving slow, Mercury – Venus, Mars, all of those planets, especially the inner planets, are moving slow. The markets don't like it, and they tend to they tend to fall when uh, when you have a, a slow moving uh, astrological environment. So that's something to watch. If people want to watch that, uh, it's, maybe it's something to watch. So this was the uh, Mercury direct chart. Now I I spoke about this before uh, that there's these two female. Uh, female aspects here on the chart, which I think is interesting because what do you have in the news now? You have these uh, Trump versus the squad, and then you have uh, Pelosi versus AOC. So you have, it's kind of interesting in the news right now, you have these two groups of women fighting in Congress. And I, I mm -hmm. think that's interesting that that's showing up here. At, at least that's what the charts are saying here, that this is involving mm -hmm. uh, uh, female energies here. But this is the actual 
uh, Mercury station here, and it's making a square to Uranus. So, Hey, stay with us one more time. I want to know who wins this fight, okay? <laughs> <laughs> sure. We'll be right back with Shane Smolian. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Jane, we were talking about this fight that's going on in Congress <laughs> with the two ladies. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, and I use that word quite loosely. <laughs> do you? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, how do you figure out? Can you look at the birth charts of these ladies and yeah, find uh, out who's going to be the winner? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something here. This is really interesting. And in, in general, um, Libra is a tough energy for the United States because the uh, United States is Cancer. So Ilhan Omar, she's a Libra. So is AOC. But AOC actually has a very powerful chart, uh, she, and she has a compatible chart with the United States. The other ones, not so much. Omar, definitely not. But AOC does, and she's got a Kronos in her chart. Kronos shows up in presidents or high-level officials. I'm not saying she's going to be president. What I'm saying is it's not an accident. You know, she talks about being a bartender. Her chart doesn't show her as a bartender. Her chart shows her as a high-level official, even though she's young and brash and the freshman and all this, you know, yada, yada stuff. She's got a strong chart. Um, so she, you know, she's, she's the one that I think is most compatible with the United States, even though they're all off on their socialist or democratic socialist agendas. Um, but I, I do, I, I wouldn't underestimate AOC just based off the chart. 
I, unfortunately, my server blew up that has all my Astro on it. So this is an older chart that I had put before. But uh, on this on this uh, Fed, Fed decision day and this Mercury Direct day, you do have a harsh aspects here too. You have the Uranus here, uh, which is the unexpected news, and then Venus is there. That can d deal with money also. But notice here that all these planets are at the same degree: Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and then uh, Mars is right there. Uh, close to. These are all very close. Neptune moved a little bit off. And then Zeus was also in there too, which is a warring aspect. So, you know, this is this is an interesting, this is a chart. Let me just put it this way. This is a, this is a loaded chart uh, of a lot of tension and unexpected surprises right on that Fed release date. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with the Fed. And uh, if when I get that software back up and running, I got to migrate all my data over and I can talk a little bit more about these individual charts. But I think AOC does have a relative of a strong chart i would say wow. um you know pelosi obviously is the old guard she's the saturn and these young hey, how, how, do, how do the folks reach you make sure it's posted on the on the site sure. okay thank you larry hey thank you shane folks we'll see you on monday god willing